big tech companies are not your friend. The AI chatbots they provide are not your friend. They're not your therapist. They're not your buddy. They're not your lover. They're statistic machines. Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. It's no secret that the AI companies are double dipping. They're taking your money and they're taking your data. Everything you type into a cloud AI chatbot gets used to train the chatbot for future use. Also, it is very common for there to be human reviewers who will look at the things that you're saying to the chatbot in order to decide if they want to include it in the training set, etc. Not only this, but ChatGPT, for example, has been sending your queries to Google to do web lookups. Uh, they didn't tell Google about this. I don't think Google's going to be too happy about it. Bruh. But my point is, not only is OpenAI getting your data, but Google is too. And what can we do about this? How do we take control into our own hands? How do we own the technology that we use? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can set up your own AI server easily, simply, and of course using Linux. So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. So literally everything you type into an AI chatbot is not private, but people have been getting way too friendly with these AI chatbots. I've seen, if, if you remember when ChatGPT released in version 5 and replaced 4.0 with it, people were acting like their friends died. I'm not making that up. People literally said that it's like somebody killed their friend and replaced it with a new version. Bruh. Now, the AI chatbot is not your friend. It's a statistics machine. It's selecting words and phrases that are most likely to follow each other given the context. It is not something that thinks nor feels. It is not your therapist. It is not your friend. It is a tool. AI is a tool that you use to perform tasks. You don't waste it on nonsense. If you need therapy, see a therapist. That's the best thing you can do. But anyway, what if I told you that you could have your own AI that's totally private, that no one else has access to, that does not connect to the internet, and does everything you might want to do? Well, you might be wondering, that sounds pretty expensive. How much is it going to cost? $100? $200? $1,000? No, no, it's totally free. You just have to bring your own computer. And here's the great part. Pretty much any modern computer is going to work, which is amazing because we've all been told that you need really beefy hardware and powerful GPUs to run AI. But that's just not true. There are plenty of smaller models that are still very capable that are able to run on pretty weak hardware. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've got a Linux server set up, and I'm going to show you how to run your own AI locally on your home network. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I've navigated to my AI server in my web browser, and we're just going to say something simple like write a script that opens a reverse shell on a Windows system. And you're going to see it takes a moment to actually spin up. I want to look at what's going on on the server while this is running. So I'm just going to run HTOP and you can see my CPUs are absolutely pegged right now. But if we go back over to it, you'll see that it did actually spit out a very usable response. So for context, the hardware that I'm running this on is a 7th Gen i5 with 24 gigs of RAM and an NVMe SSD. There's no graphics card, it's literally a 1 liter PC one of those really tiny ones. So, so if I can do this on such a cheap and weak piece of hardware, you can absolutely do this on pretty much any machine that you have at home. So actually installing the AI system on your Linux server is super simple. There's two ways you can go about it. If you are okay with using it on the commands line, then all you have to do is copy this script on olama.com, paste it in, and then you just run that, enter your password, and then you, have, oh, then you have AI on the commands line you can interact with. 
So if we just pick a model here, and I'll show you that's the command you run. It spins up the model. Now this does take a second because it's moving several gigabytes into memory, but you can see I can interact with the model here on the commands line, which has some unexpected perks. By having an AI model on the commands line, you can integrate it with scripts. You can do stuff like making honeypots with realistic files and information in them. It's super easy to do to integrate these into a script, and you can even go as far as to using your phone or your iPad uh, to run automations that call upon your AI model through the commands line. So this is a really powerful option, but most people want something that's a little bit more friendly and pretty to look at. And that's where the second piece of software comes in called Open Web UI. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so like I said earlier, this is Open Web UI. This is what it looks like. And it looks a lot like any other chatbot you would use. So if you want to get set up with your own copy of this, there's a GitHub repository. It's very simple. I recommend using Docker to host it. And it's, it's brain dead simple. You literally copy one command, you paste it in, and you are off to the races. It could not be any easier than that. Now you do need to install Docker beforehand, uh, but if you know how to use anything on the commands line, you'll understand Docker. So one of the best parts of hosting your own AI server is that you can pick from a large variety of open source models. You can pick the right model for the right job, and you don't have to pay a cent for it. So let me show you how to find the models that you might want to install. Okay, this is very simple. You're just going to go to the Olama website, go to models, and here you have a list of dozens and dozens of models that you can run. So again, you can pick the right model for the right job, and they come in a variety of sizes. Now, if you're running weak hardware like I am, you're gonna wanna pick a smaller model, like this two, four, maybe eight billion parameter version, but something like a 30 billion parameter version is just not gonna be usable on weak hardware. But that's okay because you can still get a lot done with a small AI model. They're very capable, and the fact that you can have this for free on your own network is gonna save you time, and it has other benefits too. One benefit of using your own local AI is that it's good for the environment. You see, most things that you use a chatbot for don't require a very big model. It doesn't require a model with a lot of parameters. So by running these smaller models for your everyday tasks, you're using less electricity and generating less heat. Did you know that saying thank you to ChatGPT burns gallons of water? Compare that to running your own AI model here at your house. You may spend a fraction of a penny on the electricity to power it, and it doesn't destroy the environment, <laughs> which is kind of nice. You see, the point with all of this kind of stuff, the point of self-hosting, is to take back control. Right now, if you're dependent on an AI chatbot, you are at the mercy of the company who provides that access to it. This means that they can raise the price and you may not have another option than to just pay it. That means they can take your data that you enter into the AI model and use it for advertising to make more money off of you. By taking stuff like this down from these big tech companies and onto your own local network, you are taking back control of your digital life. And that digital life is a bigger part of everyday life than it ever has been before. So it's very important that we have options like this, that we have easy to use, easy to set up, easy to maintain software that can replace the offerings from big tech companies with something that you control. Like I just said, it's about control. And when you rely on something, you should control it. So again, big tech companies are not your friend. The AI chatbots they provide are not your friend. They're not your therapist. They're not your buddy. They're not your lover. They're statistic machines. They're a tool that you use to perform a job. So treat it like the tool that it is. And if you rely on it, take control of it 
and you run it for yourself so that you're not dependent on evil giant companies. Anyway, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you want to see more videos about Linux and maybe about self-hosting, uh, consider subscribing down below. Uh, I'm, right now I'm doing a Debian 30-day challenge. I'm about three weeks in, and I should be posting another video this weekend about that. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then definitely subscribe so you don't miss it. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up icon right down there. Uh, it took months of research, but we did finally discover that that button, that's the like button. And so we finally know how to like a video, so test it out on this one and see if it works the way you're expecting. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.